Orders of the day. Item number six, M2, second reading of Bill 2, an act to amend the Building Code Act 1992 respecting home fire sprinklers. Mrs. Jeffrey. Mrs. Jeffrey. Following bill, Bill 2, an act to amend the Building Code Act 1992 respecting home fire sprinklers. Mrs. Jeffrey has moved second reading of Bill 2, an act to amend the Building Code Act 1992 respecting home fire sprinklers. Pursuant to Standing Order 96, Mrs. Jeffrey, you have up to 10 minutes. Thank you, Speaker. I rise in the House today in order to present Bill 2, an act to amend the Building Code Act 1992 respecting home fire sprinklers. Before I begin my formal remarks, I'd like to acknowledge the attendance this morning of some very special guests, members of the fire service from across Ontario. Thank you for coming. Every day, these brave men and women put their lives on the line protecting what we value most, our families and our homes. This bill will give these firefighters another tool in their effort to safeguard Ontarians from the danger of fires. Every 20 minutes, a fire service responds to a fire somewhere in Ontario. Ranging from a typical kitchen cooking fire to a full-blown industrial fire, these trained professionals have the equipment, the expertise and the training to meet any challenge. Each year, fire services are called on to respond to over 25,000 fires across Ontario. Professional firefighters have seen firsthand the tragedy families experience when they lose a home or worse, a loved one. Making residential fire sprinkler systems mandatory in all new residential houses, apartments and condominiums will reduce the number of tragedies. Last year, a resident of Brampton joined me in the house to show his support for residential sprinklers. In 1999, Mr. Giampi lost his daughter in an arson fire in Brampton. He and his family know the terrible pain and devastation fire causes. He chose to come here today again in order to show his support for residential fire sprinklers. Mr. Giampi joins us here today in the gallery. Thank you, Mr. Giampi. Thank you. Our fire service professionals are dedicated who people who respond quickly to the call for help. However, even the most well-equipped and quickest responding team cannot always get to a call in time to save a home or a family. That's where residential fire sprinklers can make the difference. They can respond to a fire in its early stages and give a family a chance to exit safely while the firefighters are responding to the scene. As many fire professionals know, those precious minutes make the difference. By having sprinklers together with properly functioning smoke alarm, you're 82% more likely to survive a fire relative to having neither. Some people have questioned the need for mandatory residential fire sprinkler systems. They have argued that the cost will affect home affordability and may cost jobs in the housing sector. I would simply respond that today we spend nearly two-thirds of our day in a sprinklered environment and no one has made an argument that we should not have sprinklers in public places because of costs or that they cost jobs, or that they cost municipal tax revenues. From our schools, offices, factories, malls, gyms and theatres, we have the benefit of being protected. But in the one place where, we, where more incidents of injuries and deaths related to fires occur, our homes, we don't have any sprinkler protection. This past Sunday evening, the Toronto Fire Service responded to a call at the Fred Victor Mission. A tragic fire cost one person's life, injured five others, and left 50 people without a home or their possessions. This three-alarm blaze required 100 fires, firefighters and two dozen trucks. Sadly, this tragedy could have been prevented had a residential fire sprinkler system been installed. Ontario, unfortunately, has the unenviable distinction of being the only jurisdiction in either Canada or the United States that does not require residential fire sprinklers in high-rise apartments or condominiums. However, we do require them in parking garages and in some lobbies, but not in the units themselves. Jurisdictions such as Vancouver have a decade of experience with residential fire sprinkler systems. In the 10 years this, since the city passed a bylaw requiring residential fire sprinklers, there has not been a single accidental fire death in a home equipped with the system. The American experience has confirmed these results. In fact, to my knowledge, there's been no accidental fire deaths occurring in a residence with a properly installed fire sprinkler system in the nearly 200 jurisdictions that require them. The Ontario public understands the value and importance of fire sprinklers 
systems. In a poll taken this summer by Polera, involving over 1,200 respondents, more than two-thirds, 67 percent, support making them mandatory in new homes and high-rise dwellings, and nearly three-quarters, 74 percent, of those considering buying a new home also support this legislation. Clearly, the public gets it. This summer, the National Fire Protection Association made a historic decision. The NFPA is an international nonprofit organization who serves as the world's leading advocate for fire prevention and is an authoritative source on public safety. Their membership totals more than 79,000 individuals from around the world and more than 80 national trade and professional organizations. This group adopted Section 13D, requiring the mandatory installation of fire sprinkler systems. The code provision for sprinklers in new and one and two family dwellings is a milestone in fire protection, said James M. Shannon, NFPA president. It is a significant step in reducing the rate of fire death and injury in the place where people are at most at risk for fire, their own homes. Fire professionals, such as the Ontario Association of Fire Chiefs, want to see this legislation passed not only to save lives and protect property, but also to reduce the number of deaths and injuries suffered by our firefighters responding to these emergencies. Other organizations, such as the Municipal Fire Prevention Officers Association, the Canadian Automatic Sprinkler Association, the Canadian Association of Retired Persons, and over 50 municipalities across Ontario support this effort. Fires in Ontario are costing our economy hundreds of millions of dollars, and more importantly, on average, 100 people lose their lives to fire in Ontario annually. Unfortunately, in most cases, fires are preventable. Just as we learned the value and importance of smoke alarms in the early 80s, now is the time to step up to the next level of fire protection. People put in fire entirely too much faith in their smoke alarms. Frequently, they've not been tested, and homeowners re fail to replace the batteries. One study found that in half the fires involving a fatality, the smoke alarm did not operate because of missing or dead batteries. Smoke alarms do what their name implies. They provide early detection and warning of the smoke from fire, but they take no action on the fire itself. To prevent more deaths and injuries, we need to make meaningful progress in fire protection and safety with an additional intervention. That intervention, already available, is wide-scale installation of fast-response residential fire sprinkler systems. One key group this proposed legislation stands to protect are individuals who are frequently overlooked, those who need protection the most, our seniors and our disabled. Residential fire sprinklers add a le level of protection to seniors and the disabled who choose to live an independent lifestyle. Families who worry about their loved ones forgetting to shut off a stove now have, can have the peace of mind knowing that their loved ones will have protection that will give them the time to escape safely. Ontario has a proud record of introducing regulations that protect people from a number of perils. Many of these regulations were adopted with little or no debate because they were the right thing to do. For example, the Ontario Building Code Regulation Section 4.1.9 were written to include standards of construction that take into account earthquakes. To my knowledge, no one has died related to an earthquake in Ontario in the past 10 years. Compare this to the over 1,000 deaths and 10,000 injuries attributed to fires during the same time period. We include earthquake protection because we want to protect people and property under a variety of circumstances. It's not an option, but a requirement. So how can we debate on an issue such as fire safety as an option when Ontarians are being killed or injured due to preventable fires? Residential sprinklers save lives, reduce injuries and property damage and need to be in place today. It's a fire safe measure whose time has come and those who want to make Ontario a safer place for themselves and their families should support Bill 2. Shouldn't we be listening and implementing what countless coroner's juries have been re recommending for years? Bill 2 simply recognizes something that we've known for a long time. Sprinklers save lives and property. It's the logical next step, and its time has come. The, ne the next evolution in building safer and smarter homes. These silent fire guards, uh, firefighters stand guard 24 hours a day, seven days a week, protecting what we value most, our families and our homes. In conclusion, I'd like to thank my friend, firefighter Brian Maltby. He's been relentless in his determination to see this legislation come to fruition. I know Brian has a day, a dream of a day when firefighters will respond to a fire by running into a house, turning off the water, mopping up the floor and returning safe and sound to their loved ones. Thank you, Brian.
This is the time that we need to demonstrate our commitment to fire safety. We need this bill to pass second reading and to be referred to public hearings so that Ontarians can participate in making this province a national and international leader in fire safety. Thank you, Speaker.